One of the most common forms of wind damage to composition shingles are broken seal tabs. Unfortunately, broken seal tabs are often overlooked due to the pain and hassle of locating and marking them. It is literally backbreaking work to bend down and check every single shingle by hand, not to mention the pain of tearing up your fingertips on the coarse granules. Well, with the broken seal tab detector, those problems are a thing of the past. With the broken seal tab detector, you can not only locate the broken seal tabs, you can effortlessly mark them with the chalk at the same time. This device will save you time while on the roof and save your back and your fingertips from unnecessary pain. And for those of you who don't want to purchase the professional model, we are going to show you how to make your very own for just a few dollars. I'll warn you, the homemade version doesn't look near as pretty as our professional model, but it works just the same. Let's begin with the parts that go into a makeshift broken seal tab detector. Our journey begins at Lowe's, but Home Depot will likely have the same exact things. Let's go to the hardware aisle and then locate the metal rod stock. We are looking for three foot aluminum angle. You want to stay away from any steel rod due to it being too heavy. Remember, you are going to be moving the rod with your wrist thousands of times, and so the lighter, the better. The reason that we are going to use the angle rod rather than round rod stock is simply because the angle rod has a channel that will keep in place the sidewalk chalk that we will eventually attach to the rod. Next, let's grab some JB Weld. I do not doubt that there are better adhesives that could be used, and if you know of any, then use them. There is also no doubt that there are better ways of adhering the metal parts together, such as welding. However, as messy and ugly as JB Weld might make the final product appear, it is quick and easy for anyone to use. Next, let's grab a clamp. We need to be able to hold everything together while the JB Weld dries. Now, for the most important part, the pry bar. Remember what I said about keeping the final product as lightweight as possible. Most pry bars are curved and will not lay flat against our aluminum angle rod. So we are going to have to cut the curved portion of the pry bar off so that we have two flat surfaces to glue together. However, even if the pry bar you purchase is flat, you would likely want to cut most of it off in an effort to keep the weight down. You will also note that the pry bars are made of thick metal. There are many different ways of cutting this metal, but I am choosing to use a grinder because I am also going to use the grinder to sharpen the blade of the pry bar as well as rough up the edges so that the glue holds better. This brings us to our next purchase. Grinders are dirt cheap, but they can also be very dangerous. Don't ask me how I know that. If you can find a better way, do it. If not, proceed at your own risk and do not blame me for any injuries you may sustain. In fact, let me go one step further. Do not do what I am doing with this grinder. Well, except for some thick rubber bands that you can pick up at Office Depot and some sidewalk chalk that you can buy at Walmart, Walgreens, or Amazon, that is all that you will likely need. I can't think of a better place to work than right here on Waikiki Beach. That big rock right in front of us ought to make a great work surface. I'm going to start by cutting off the curved surface from the handle of the pry bar so that the flat portion of the bar makes good contact with the aluminum rod and the glue will hold it in place for years to come.
Now, I'm going to rough up the back of the remaining portion of the handle of the pry bar so that the glue has something to grab onto. Remember what I said earlier in the video. What I am doing today with the grinder is actually very dangerous and you need to find another safer method to accomplish the same thing. Now I'm going to sharpen the blade of the pry bar. Here I am roughing up the surface of the end of the aluminum rod to which I will be gluing the roughed up side of the pry bar. Now I'm going to prepare the JB weld by mixing up the two-part epoxy system with my fingers before applying it to the aluminum rod and pry bar. There really is no clean, pretty way to apply the JB weld. You may as well accept the fact that it's going to be ugly and just use as much as you need. Here is what it looks like after the JB weld has been applied but before it has dried. Notice how I took the glue all the way around the sides. I have now applied the clamp to hold the two pieces together. The instructions on JB Weld say that it will be ready in an hour, but I have always let it dry overnight and I have not had one break yet. Lastly, let's apply some duct tape to the other end of the aluminum rod to make holding the angle with your hand a little bit more palatable. Here it is after it has dried. Now let's install a piece of sidewalk chalk with a single rubber band. To install the chalk, just wrap the rubber band around it four times from the top to the bottom. You see how firm the grip is. When your chalk begins to erode away, merely push the chalk down a bit and slide the rubber bands back up. Well folks, that is it. It's not pretty to look at, but it works wonders. And it will save your fingers and your back. What is more, you will actually find more damage. Because if you think that your people are currently out there checking every single shingle on the roof, <laughs> well, you would be wrong. And it's not just broken seal tabs that you will locate. Frequently, shingles are torn from the wind, but you cannot see the tears because the shingles are lying flat. Lastly, I would like to take a moment to show you how we illustrate the broken seal tabs for damage photos. You can see how much more dramatic the damaged shingles look in the photos when they are being held up by the laminated business cards. Normally, you are taking a photo of chalk lines, which cannot be seen from far away, or you're taking a close-up of a chalk line on one single shingle. Being able to photograph an entire slope of a roof while still being able to see the damage from that distance really drives home the amount of damage on a roof to whomever may be reviewing your photos later. You can purchase blank business card stock at Office Depot. It really is not necessary to have anything printed onto the cards because people cannot read it from that far away anyway and they already know what it's about. Then, take the cards to FedEx office and use their self-service machine to laminate approximately 12 cards per sheet. You will need to make about 200 cards to ensure that you have enough to do an entire roof. Then, use their self-service paper cutter to cut up your cards. The lamination gives the cards enough strength to hold up the heavier architectural shingles and it also allows them to be reused many, many times. I hope that the video has helped you in some way. If you have any comments or suggestions for other videos, 
shoot an email to steve at insuranceclaim.com.